right or wrong, black or white, cross the line, you're going to pay. Live or die by shades of gray. That's some cry, cry, cry. Welcome to Real Liberty Media, y'all. This is uh, Vince Easley. I'm your host today with the Ponder Gander and What Matters. And uh, we're taking a look at a little uh, justified and uh, why we fight. We're going to work into uh, the Bundy Ranch standoff five years later. And we're going to talk about that at the end. And I'm going to kind of walk through some of this business of why we fight. So, you know, why we fight, uh, become the media and take back your future. Your journalism, that is, truth needs defense. And you are what you do, not what you say you'll do. So be the media. This is Vinny online. And uh reminded you, you can help uh, in other ways right here. You'll find it in the, in the R log here. Uh, Real Liberty Media Donate link. Uh, so today this... Uh, is stepping back in after about three weeks, I went back and uh, I covered my first three broadcasts from UCY.TV from 2013 when I started doing this uh, radio thing here. Uh, and today we're back to Bundy et al. Standing Matters. It is the Bundy Ranch Standoff and Trial Report by me, Vincent Easley II. It is What Matters, a Ponder Gander radio writing series and all the hashtags that go along with it. This is April the 19th, 2019. A week later, after... Uh, the five-year anniversary. So, whatever it takes, uh, overcoming tyranny and oppression in America. And you'll see the photo credit, my one and only published photograph. Thank you, read out those uh, and, uh, right there. Photo credit, justified. Taste of the non sequitur. Right or wrong, I said, uh, black or white. Cross the line and you're going to pay. Well, uh, even so much as... Uh, if you plant the wrong bush in your front yard, in some places, you will comply or die. It is possible. It is. Uh, go how. Talk is cheap and truth is action. If you see something, do something. Know your rights and record all encounters with public officials in the public. Then audit to ensure your rights will not be violated. Thank you, Wanataka. To be rooted it is, is to say, here I am, nourished, and here I will grow. For I have found a place where every sunrise shows me how to be more than what I was yesterday. And I need not wonder to feel the wonder of my blessings. That's from uh, a book called Shattered by Kevin Hearn. When when we think about this, it's like real simple. And we go back to <clears throat> Child's Tales. This is, a, you know, it is the, uh, the, the tale of the tortoise. And the hare uh, hide the hoof. It's uh, the setup for the takedown. It's the stalking horse. And what's behind that uh, that door? Sometimes we wonder as we ponder. But what's a time? Once upon a time, there was an old mother pig who had three little pigs, and they not enough food to eat for them. So when they are old enough, she sent them out in the world to seek their fortunes. Now, the first little pig, he was very lazy, and he didn't want to work at all. And he built his house out of straw. The second little pig, he worked just a bit harder, but he was somewhat lazy, too, and he built his house of sticks. Then they sang and danced, and they played together the rest of the day. The third little pig worked hard all day and built his house with bricks. It was sturdy. It was so sturdy. A sturdy house, complete with a fireplace and chimney, and it looked like it was, could withstand the strongest winds. Now, the next day, a wolf happened by, passed by the lane where the three little pigs lived. And he saw the straw house, and he smelt the pig inside, and he thought the pig would make, he'd make a mighty fine meal, and his mouth began to water. Mm. So he knocked on the door, and he says, Little pig, little pig, let me in, let me in. Whoops. <laughs> let me move that wire. <laughs> But the little pig saw the wolf's big paws through the keyhole, and he answered back, No, 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 not by the hairs on my chinny chin chin. The English pig. Then the wolf showed his teeth, and he says, And I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house down. So he huffed, and he puffed, and he blew the house down. The wolf opened his jaws very wide and bit down as hard as he could. But the little pig escaped and ran away to hide. Second little pig. 
Well, the wolf had continued down the lane, and he passed the second house made of sticks. And he saw the house, and he smelled the pigs inside. His mouth began to wander, and he thought, mm, That'd be a fine dinner that would make. And so he knocked on the door, and he says, Little pigs, little pigs, let me in, let me in. But before the little pigs saw the wolf's pointy ears, they had out through that keyhole, they answered back to him. And he says, No, 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 not by the house, me chinny chin chin. So the wolf, he showed his teeth, and he says, Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house down. So he huffed, and he puffed, and he blew the house down. The wolf, the wolf was so greedy, and he tried to catch both pigs at once, but he was so greedy, and he got neither. His big jaws clamped down on nothing but air, and the two little pigs scrambled away as fast as their little hooves could carry them. The wolves chased them down the lane, and he almost caught them, but they made it to the brick house and slammed the door closed before the wolf could catch them. Now the three little pigs, they were very frightened, and they knew that the wolf wanted to eat them, and that was very, very true. The wolf hadn't eaten all day, and he'd worked up quite a large appetite chasing the pigs around, and now he could smell all three of them inside, and he knew that the little pigs, they would, oh, they would make such a lovely feast. So he knocked on the door, and he says, Little pigs, little pigs, let me in, let me in. But the little pigs saw the wolf's narrow eyes through the keyhole, so they answered back, No, 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 not by the hairs of our chinny chin chin. <clears throat> so the wolf, he shows his teeth and he says, And I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house down. Well, he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and huffed and he huffed and huffed. And he puffed and he puffed, but he could not blow the house down. Ah, at last, he was so out of breath, he couldn't huff, and he couldn't puff anymore, so he stopped to rest, and, and he thought for a bit. But this was too much. The wolf danced about with such rage, and he swore he'd come down the chimney and eat up the little pig for his supper. And while he was climbing down and onto the roof, the little pigs, they made up a blazing fire and put a pot of water on the bowl. Then, just as the wolf come down the chimney, the little piggies pulled the lid off the pot and plop in went the wolf and slammed the lid down into the scalding water the wolf was. So the little piggies, they boiled them up and they ate them for supper. Quite a little different story than what you might have been told. Did you know the pigs ate the wolf? And who cried wolf anyways? That's what I'd like to know. Well, there's been many people who cry wolf because they've heard that story all their life. But it's always been told just a little bit different, I think, sometimes. But to be rooted is that to say, Here I am nourished, and here I will grow. For I have found a place where every sunrise shows me how to meet war than what I was yesterday. And I need not wander to feel the wonder of my blessings. Thank you, Kevin Hearn. Uh, shattered. Robert Frost says, I have miles to go and promises to keep before I sleep. Johnny Cash, he said, every question that I ask, I get a lie, lie, lie. When everybody's forgotten you and you're uh, left on your own, you wake up some cold day and find out you're alone. I'll hunt. I'm sorry. I'll hurt. Don't hunt the hurt. I'll hurt when you think of the fool. <laughs> it will hurt. <laughs> Try it again. Uh, it will hurt. Yes, it will. It hurts right now. Maybe just a little bit. It'll hurt when you think of the fool you've been. For every lie you tell, you're going to cry, cry, cry. Now i got to get over here and push buttons. Let me push pause and we'll play that song. Boom, boom. Thank you, Johnny. You're going to cry, cry, cry. Well, a lot of things you cry about in this world, Adam. Pretty sharp. You've all shed a tear. Well, what are we, what are we really crying about? Some ill things going on in this world. War is an ill thing, as I surely know. But it would be an ill world for weaponless dreamers if evil men were not now and then slain. 
Thank you, Kipling. Best intentions. The path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the inequity of the selfish and the tyranny of evil men. Blessed is he who in the name of charity and goodwill shepherds the weak through the valley of darkness, for he is truly his brother's keeper and the finder of lost children. And I will strike down great vengeance upon thee with furious anger on those who attempt to poison and destroy my brothers, and you will know my name. I I, I kind of changed up this a little bit in there. Oh, let me jump down to it. Change it. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance those who attempt to poison and destroy my brothers, and you will know my name when I lay my fury upon thee. That's taken from Ezekiel uh, 25, 17, uh, the King James. Uh, says it says, uh, And I will execute great vengeance upon them with furious rebukes, and they shall know that I am the Lord, and they shall know and, that, and when I lay my vengeance upon them, that is. Now, the first part of that, Quentin Tarantino from Pulp Fiction, and uh, uh, have a, a couple of uh, click-ons here for a YouTube video. Um, and I think I might do that. Uh, we'll go to the ending with uh, Samuel Al Jackson. And I'll have to go hit mute again here. Or pause, that is. Okay, pause here. Okay. So... The C word, that's cussing mad. Or displaying a plumage of verbiage. Practical versus practical. Uh, why we fight? Mean it. Don't demean it. As good as you can be. In the words of Jenny Cuss. Anyway, so there is a practical distinction, and I hope you'll find my explanation practicable. The words both stem ultimately from the Greek word, or that term, that is, of uh, praktikos, meaning practical. However, while practical refers to something that is effective, useful, or easy to use, practical means uh, something that is or could be done. Thank you, Daily Writing Tips. That is uh, where we find ourselves in what is practicable or practical, and to engage and to find that... Uh, wrong to try to make it right. You know, that stirs that when, when we get custom mad, we get stirred up. But uh, there are consequences and re reper <laughs> uh, a reverb. Repercussions. There are consequences and repercussions. And uh, don't try to take my cornbread. So we'll leave this here for you to find also. Uh, click that and that'll take you over to the uh, that movie uh, well, I guess I'm just going to have to click it real quick and, and hit uh, mute and, or stop the play on it and just to say, can, can you name this you movie? You eat your cornbread. Mm -hmm. Oh, Trevor. Don't say that, there. You talking to me? Yeah, I think he's talking to you. You talking to me? I think he's talking to you. Can you, ta can you name this movie? You going to eat your cornbread? Well, you know, that's how life happens sometimes. People think that it's all right to just come along and take what you got, right? Your cornbread, your cattle, or whatever else there might be. Uh, you get cussing mad about it. Well, it's all left up to you. Even a blind pig can find an acre once in a while. And here, I'm going to open up on this, and let's listen to this song. There we go. That's all left up to you. Yes, it is a kind of a hillbilly redneck show, isn't it, Frumpy? <laughs> the music show, that is. Well, let's see here. Where where does that leave us at, at a, after the blind pig finding an acorn? Well, cussing mad. That's where we was at. People just, they just don't swear like they used to. As long as go as uh, 1944, H.L. Meacham said that the, uh, the great observer of the American language. He says, uh, sadly noted that is, that cursing had been 
on the decline since the Civil War, and that while there were still obscenities, uh, it was all based upon one or uh, two four-letter words in their derivatives. And there is little true profanity in it. We'll just take a look, uh, look back. Uh, by St. Boogers and all the saints at the backside of uh, purgatory. So, so, there is no Booger Saint, of course. And uh, this is a line from uh, Stern Tristram uh, Shanty. Shanty, that is uh, considered by scholars to have been a homoerotic subtext. Uh, let it fly with pride. Now, down to number 10. I skipped from the top down here. And these are the best I could get out of this link right there. Uh, but uh, go figure. Uh, <laughs> of all things to say. It says that the, by the double bird jumping genimity. It's too bad the tradition of. Productive, long, uh, by the swears is falling out of fashion. You could load enough crazy sounding nonsense out there to really scare your kids into cleaning their rooms. You might just only imagine. But then there's the other guy. He's uh, He's been known to have crossed three lanes of traffic and stop his car just to get, uh, that is, just to right the very smallest of wrongs. And beyond finding a deliquid turd playing the knockout game. Uh, this came. This was a good one. I, I like audio books. Uh, Mark Cameron, Day Zero. Well, uh, yeah. Wouldn't you like to catch somebody like that? You know them. You seen any of them videos, the knockout game? So this was the guy's character here. And the, the hero of the story. We have kings and grass castles. A king of his own kingdom to be blown away by a puff of wind. Opine the grime. It's a token at home. It's what you <clears throat> it's what you've scraped off and what you carry with you. Colson Whitehead zone. Thank you, uh, Circle Line. The Danish define the state. It is the institutionalized and centralized political organization whose management has a legal monopoly on the right, the right to, with power, determine and regulate law and order within a specific territory. Well, you wonder who makes the laws and <clears throat> who these uh, people at the bar are. Har har har! It ain't funny at all. It may be a, uh, it may be that a man who listens to himself is twice a fool. That was said to the rebel Johnny Yuma, and we're gonna have to push some buttons over here. So let me go push uh, pause on the recording. Uh, unpaused. Okay, we're back. Here I am. The uh is the sound of someone strangling chickens. <laughs> I am. Thank you. And I wish upon you tone deafness for your listening uh enjoyment. <laughs> we'll be singing la 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 in a minute, but <laughs> yeah, that was a uh, rambling man. And uh well, you can run on for a long time. You can go tell that long tongue liar. Well, my goodness gracious. Let me tell you the news. Just go do my will. There's a voice of ringing softly in my head. And there's times like dying. Or it was said in a Western short film anyways. But sooner or later, God's going to cut you down. Sooner or later, God's going to cut you down. I think I've got my links... Uh, mixed up here, um, so I'll probably have to go back and uh, change that. So if you click it when you're over on the R log, yes, we've uh, thinking uh, circle for this hashtag R L O G. I call it R log, radio log, and it uh, it'll take you at least here and to Hal Anthony if you're uh, doing a search. And I guess I'll have to remind Grimner again. Start using that R log uh, on the Twitter. 
we'll capture that. Uh, we'll capture the, capture the market for the R-Log. There's a few people that use that, but <coughs> mostly unrelated. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, uh, singing your own mighty song. Well, singing your own mighty song. And I'm supposed to have a, a link for that, but anyways, that's another Mark Cameron uh, Day Zero quote. But, a burp. Thank you. Singing la la la. Let's get. Let's hear this. This is uh, well, oh Pokey, you might uh, figure out if you know who he is or not. And I'll come up here and put his pause again. Oh, wait a minute. That was the wrong one. Wrong link. I'll pause. I'm so happy. Got me singing la la la. La la la. The la la blues. Pokey LaFarge. Sure enough. Oh no, what happened to my page? There it is. <laughs> I thought I pushed the wrong button. Well, normally I would. That every man, every normal man at least, is, uh, he must be tempted at times to spit on his hands and hoist the black flag and begin slitting throats. I'm some tough words. But, I've heard him echoed. But that was a quote from uh, Meacham. I've said, uh, guard your words. Guard your words. Sometimes I don't, do I? <laughs> but, hey, why do we fight? That's today's uh, title for uh, a ponder gander. We're singing la, la, la. Yeah, the, the la, la booze. But it was so happy, he said it made him so happy of singing. The La La Blues. Well, we come back to this uh, this uh, valley. And it says, as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I take a look at my life and realize there's not much left. Because I've been blasting and laughing so long that even my mama thinks that my mind is gone. But I ain't never crossed a man that didn't deserve it. Me, treated like a punk. You know that's unheard of. You better watch how you're talking and where you're walking. This is some uh, gangster paradise. Let's click on it and listen to it. Uh, I bet Grimner knows who it is. Living in a gangster's paradise. Money and power. That's what we find in this battle. This occupation of punks. Like a fart in a phone booth sometimes. Or you might say the blade itself incites to deeds of violence. Homer said it. It's the first law. According to this one fella. Violence is not the answer. It's the question. And the answer is yes. Isn't that the response we find so many times? It's how we're treated. If you get in the path, even just by words, not even deeds, we see people in prison. To be or not to be. To be free or not to free. To crawl or not to crawl. To stand or not to stand. To plan or not to plan. To sing or swing. Think or not. No, I'm not talking about you. F all the perfect people. Chip Taylor and the new Ukrainians. You can listen to that from the uh, R log here. The radio log at Real Liberty Media. Uh oh. I accidentally just killed. <laughs> I accidentally hit the button. <laughs> I did. Let's go back and push another button and open it back up. <laughs> this automated thing, Grimner, you know what I'm talking about. Um, don't you? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Bump, bump, bump. The gangster's paradise. Okay. Now I've got to get back down here. Where was I? Where was I? Uh, way past cussing mad, do believe. Uh, but why we fight? Do we get cussing mad? 
sure. There we was. Back there to the violence is not the answer. To sing or swing. <clears throat> That's what we found with the, the turncoats that uh, people uh, informants. They sing. Sing la la la. Singing their own song. Well, truth never damages the cause that is just, says Gandhi. We can rationalize all we want, but the fact is there is not a right way to do the wrong thing. Becky Craven, uh, Carol Bundy's friend, quote from her, link in the R log here. On the other hand, even if it's not paved, if it's not a paved pathway to hell, one can still do the right thing in a wrong way. That's where we find some of our political prisoners in the right thing in a wrong way. We must ask if they'd give any advice had they had the opportunity to do it again. And uh, certainly others has, had done nothing. Certainly. Like uh, Todd. Lots of others. I don't well, I'd rather be in hell with my back broke than eating high on the hog with these sort of folks. And I'm not being above my raisins and as far as turning down a good meal. And then, of course, I, myself, I'd eat it all but this quill. We do need, we all need a friend <clears throat> now and then. Oh, I'll read that again, how I wrote it down and where I took it from. We all need a friend, if not, but every now and again. Carol Bundy said the beautiful thing about the truth is, is it's so easy to tell. Well, where does Clive and Bundy stand today? Last year, there was the Bundy appeal update and just a handful of documents, and we're, we're still sitting in there. Judge uh, Gloria Navarro said that the uh, failure to turn over such ed evidence violates due process, and further, she, she pined... The the misconduct on both the prosecution and the investigation agencies. It's egregious what these people did. How they colluded, conspired against the Bundys and other folks. And how they captured them and locked them up. That's why we fight. Is Cliven Bundy American patriot? Mike pa uh, Stickler, he's, uh, he addressed uh, government duplicity. Uh, re referring to the trial testimony in regard to Clive and Bundy's uh, continuous trespass, the cattle that is, that the uh, the BLM admitted uh, that they had changed the rules and claims from the prosecution that uh, certain documents didn't even exist or certain events didn't even happen was an intentional cover-up to pr uh, protect the prosecution uh, and weaken the defense. Those are the trial arguments, it is. I was in there for uh, for some of that, except for when the jury was seated. Prejudiced, it's uh, yeah, prejudiced. If I want to talk on one me to talk about that. I believe I've got this link right here <clears throat> to click on right here. Let's open it. It's clickable right here in the R log. Take you over here to civillaws.com. Prejudice. What does prejudice mean? There's several things you can look at here. Online legal forms and uh, on down to ask a civil rights lawyer. Well, the term prejudice, it varies in its respective definition with regard to a variety of spectrums in which the word is used. Primarily, the term prejudice can be defined as the discrimination against another group or individual with regards to an individual trait or characteristic believed to be out of the control of the individual who displays it. Examples of social prejudice can be in any of the following. Racial, sexual orientation, uh, age, gender, religious discrimination. <clears throat> Although the rights expressed within the United States Constitution allow for every American citizen to enjoy the rights. Hold on just a minute. Okay, good. Uh, 
uh, enjoy the right to freedom of speech, express prejudice with regard to the happiness, opportunity, and well-being of another individual is both illegal and unlawful. This can include biased hiring practices and admission policies. <clears throat> with prejudice versus without prejudice. In a legal forum, the term prejudice retains additional connotation extending from social bias with regard to court decision. Verdicts mandated by a presiding, uh, presiding uh, court can vary in their respective prejudice. With prejudice, in the case of a verdict mandated by a court of law subsequently acknowledged by the presiding judge, a verdict with prejudice entails that the sentencing is final and cannot be appealed. A verdict with prejudice can only be granted upon a review of all the pertinent case details. Without prejudice, in the case of a verdict issued without prejudice, the presiding judge does not disallow an individual's right or opportunity to appeal the verdict through another trial or a motion to an applicable appellate court. Still sitting over there um, in the Ninth Circuit, this uh, uh, the state prosecution of federal uh, Authorities has challenged this dismissal with prejudice against Bundy in a Tier 1 and uh, Tier 2. And you got the other guys, you know, that came along that took a plea or uh, were convicted. A, a very, very, very un, unfair trial all through this. And that's the way it works. I, I saw with Bruce Doucette in Denver how that works railroad railroad thanks Mike Stickley that article uh, was from last year so uh, today is a four year anniversary then a week ago now five years the anniversary of the protest in Bunkerville Nevada widely known worldwide as the standoff it's also called the uh, the Battle of Bunkerville the, the Bundy Ranch standoff the, uh, what I like it, uh, what I've heard it called best, best was uh, the peaceful pushback. That's where uh, hundreds and hundreds of people came and stood in the gap, despite their fear. Now, five years later, the protests that de redefine the West, uh, you'll find this link here in, and that comes from Doug Knowles. It matters how you stand. Got the note, Doug. Also, uh, you'll find that picture up there from uh, Readout News. Shout out to them folks right there for sure. Uh, we have uh, uh, arbitrary legality makes a bad laws. So there's a, a link shared by uh, Brian Hyde. Thank you. And for some reason here, this has covered up the, uh, well, I'll have to go back and edit. It's covered this stuff up here. Let me go back over and see if I can read it better right from here. <coughs> I have to go fix that edit. in the preview as when I was reading from. So I'll go back down here. So I'll go on it. Um, arbitrary, well, I'll let you read it. Arbitrary uh, legality makes bad laws. And uh, thanks, Brian, uh, for sharing that. Now, also, the uh, Nevada court dismissed uh, Clive and Bundy's lawsuit against the Center for Biological Diversity on uh, February 26, 2019, in response to last year's motion filed by Kieran Suckling, uh, November 8, 2018. And you'll find the links for the Twitter status. Uh, this motion is not even a motion. Sick. Ha, I got to use some of that today there. Thanks. Uh, to uh, pro writing aim and uh, uh, writing momentum. Uh, well, I, sorry, I interrupted myself. Let me go back in here. Suckling said last week on his Twitter account of the uh, five minute hearing stating that the uh, plaintiff's uh, lead attorney didn't show, again, he's a sick, put them in the, back, in the brackets, uh, failed to serve 
the state of Nevada. Again, here's a cure on suckling uh, status quo. Bundy claims the U.S. Constitution forbids the federal government from owning large, large swaths of land for public use. His assertion has been rejected by the Supreme Court and numerous federal courts, including two rulings issued in response to filings by Bundy himself. Included there is the link to that uh, biologicaldiversity.org uh, press release. Public lands, Bundy. And from the uh, NevadaIndependent.com article, Clive and Bundy sues Nevada seeking court order to declare federally owned lands uh, property of the state. Fair use notice. Creating Creative Commons and all that good stuff. Uh, lawyer says <coughs> says Rancher Bundy will appeal uh, the lawsuit dismissal. That comes from uh, uh, on April the 10th of 2019 from David Ferreira, a Las Vegas Review Journal. And uh, thanks um, the Rancho 42. Uh, Joe Robertson's uh, conviction conviction overturned. So what about Todd Engel and Greg Burleson and Jerry DeLemis? Talked about some of them earlier. And some other folks up in there. Uh, the Judicial Watch Supreme Court moves to overturn conviction of a uh, veteran fined and jailed for uh, digging ponds on this rural Montana property. He's since passed. Also note news is uh, Harney County Sheriff Dave Ward is intending to resign. Uh, due to the, the county's current budget cuts, uh, citing the inability to meet his duties and responsibilities of the sheriff mandated by law, a well-known figure from the Oregon standoff said he'll be stepping down at the end of the year. Where does it leave it? That's well, just what I asked Clive and Bundy the two days after he got out up there in front of the sheriff's department in, in Las Vegas. All this, all these years later, now what? There's nothing changed. <clears throat> They're still trying to uh, appeal this dismissal with prejudice and bring them back to court. So, why do we fight? Cussing mad. You ever get cussing mad? Feel like you're doing right. And somebody come again you. That about wraps this up here. I'll have to go back and do a little bit of edit. I'll ask Grimner to come in here and uh, do all them tag things on this uh, video and squash it and put it into the the R log over there. And uh, Ponder Gander. Find it at reallibertymedia.com. And uh, so this is uh, the free freakers. You want to be free? Be a freaker. That's right. This is Freaker Friday right here at RealLibertyMedia.com. Stick around. I believe we got a Grammy. She's, uh, I don't think I heard she was leaving out tonight. That was last week. So she'll be here at 7 o'clock tonight, all times Eastern. And at 11, we've got Graham and, well, let me get over here to the chat. And you guys, somebody tell me, Grimner is uh, Moosey coming along tonight. we got the Freaker's Ball, y'all, or Balls to the Walls. Well, then, tomorrow at noon Eastern, we've got the dork table where uh, Mr. Flash somebody will be uh, dorking along uh, hostage or not. Uh, Co-hostage. I like the way you spell that. All caps and the uh, host. Co-hostage. <laughs> Very clever. And Sunday, come on along at a quarter to noon when uh, Grimner fires up the uh, instrumentation to bring us some uh, wonderful blues for the Sunday as we play some trivia. At Real Liberty Media. Fast fingers. Come push some buttons. We got fast fingers over here. So of us. Some of them. I'm pretty slow. Anyway, so then we're going to go and we're going to switch up the time zone watch because we're going to the left coast out there and going behind the woodshed at noon o'clock Pacific for the notice in the news with Hal Anthony.
That's 3 p.m. Eastern Time, y'all. Come on back Monday, too, for some grim leftovers. Mr. Grim Near, he comes up from uh, far and near and brings some of the most delicious links and savory flavor. So come on along, and that is at 7 p.m. Eastern. Tuesday, we're back again at noon. No, I'm sorry, it's going to be 1 o'clock Eastern. Noon, my time. Four in a perfect world where Flash is back and me many times along with him. And, uh, hey, that brings us to Wednesday and Grammy Mary back again in a rocket chair. Blasting off, y'all. And that is at 7 p.m. Eastern. Thursday. Uh, you know what? I was messing up your time actually yesterday, Flash. But at noon o'clock, you figure it out. Easter Central <laughs> for twenty percent off is uh, such a deal. Yes, come on. And Flash, he does a a solo, uh, a solo that we can hear him still. <laughs> and uh, and <coughs> excuse me, back again for the very next week of Friday, right here. And have another Ponder Gander. I appreciate y'all coming along. Let me go push a button. Buttons, I say buttons. Oh, hey, did I tell you guys about uh, I got a pet? I sure did. I got a. I named him Bob. He likes water. Uh, yes, I got a sponge. He's <laughs> <It's> so carefree. <laughs> Toodles. 